The diamond in the rough, I called this. This is a 4K USB 3.0 HDMI capture, completely out of focus here. <laughs> this is a $50 to $60 capture card that compared to all of the other can't link knockoff capture cards, if you missed my $15 capture card review, we're talking about that. It's not bad, but it has some issues and it's a little weird, as with all of these cheap ones. But for under 70 bucks at worst, it's available from like 50 million different companies on Amazon because <laughs> all of these are just remanufactured and resold because they're not, they're just clones of a clone of a clone. This might make a lot of people happy, especially if you're on Linux or if you're on Mac because you've been looking for something that will work there instead of Windows. The one I specifically have is from Eliclive. But, like I said, there's a bunch of different ones and I will have like 10 links to different options available to you in case they sell out like what happened last time. We're going to review it today, right after this. So this little 4K HDMI USB 3.0 HD capture was one that was recommended to you all after my original $15 Cant Link or Cam Link knockoff capture card review back in June. And I'm slowly trudging my way through my capture card backlog. I have a ton to work through. Uh, but this one struck me is pretty interesting because it's cheaper than some of the others I've recommended which can go up to 100 150 bucks this one is available for under $60 in most cases on Aliexpress or Amazon lots of links in the description below if you want to pick one up for yourself uh, they are affiliate links this seems to be a pretty solid option especially since it is UVC so it will work on Mac Windows and Linux uh, but there, there's some quirks about it, as I said. First and foremost, it uses a USB A to A cable, which is always really frustrating. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, I guess, given that it's just USB, but it's annoying because they only ever include short cables, and it's not something you're going to have a spare cable for lying around unless you hoard capture cards like I do. And I still only have like three of these because I've only had three capture cards that use it. It is kind of annoying. It does, however, have a headphone output and a microphone input in case you need to connect your audio for using it for a camera. Pretty cool. And then it has HDMI 2.1 or 2.0, not 2.1, and HDCP 2.2 input and output for 4K 60 pass through, which is pretty cool. It does support 4K 60 pass through, SDR only, however. A couple of these models you will notice on the Amazon page say HDR somewhere. While I haven't tried those specific models, I can guarantee you with almost a 99% certainty that they don't support HDR in any way. No HDR pass-through, no HDR capture, none at all. They're not built for that. That's not how the drivers are set up. There's no tone mapping software built in. I, I can basically promise you that's not going to happen. It comes with a nice metal shroud, but when I took it apart, you can see here there's no heat sinks. So like with some of the Cantlink competitors you or knockoffs, you may find that this gets hot and burns out on you over time because that happened to a lot of people who got bad clones of the Cantlink because you know, they're all clones of a clones of a clone. Random knockoff Chinese stuff has mixed or non-existent quality control. And so mine doesn't have a heatsink. Mine could overheat at any point in time. So far it hasn't. I've tested it for hours. It's good so far. Doesn't mean it won't. As mentioned, this is a UVC capture card, so it'll work in most of your video chatting apps like Zoom, Skype, Discord, Windows camera app, things like that. And it does work across all operating systems, Windows, Mac, and Linux. I tested and confirmed this as you all keep getting annoyed when I skip out on that. Latency-wise, you're looking at 128 milliseconds of latency, which is not great, but not the worst in the world. You could do much worse. In fact, some of the other Cantlink clones had like 400 milliseconds of latency, so yikes. The main limiting factor here for me is the capture quality, which is ironic, but sucks. Um, it's not amazing. It's not the worst I've seen, and there are certainly worse ways to go, but it is 4K pass-through, 1080p capture, and that is its primary use case. Anything outside of that is kind of hit or miss, but it's MJPEG only. So you're looking at only Motion JPEG, which is a very compressed ca uh, codec, which will work on USB 2.0 as well. So this being USB 3 basically serves no purpose. It is a very lossy codec that will result in artifacting even if you record completely lossless. You see, the way that I do a lot of these capture card tests is I record the direct native YUI2 MJPEG or whatever stream that the card provides available to me. That way there is literally no recompression at all. And even in that mode, because it is motion JPEG, literally JPEG images per frame, 
there ends up being artifacting without compression even applying. So it's not the best, and I showed it here with my A6400 running through it, and you can already start to see little blocking on my head and things like that, and then that shows up in gameplay as well if you're using it for capturing games. Now, I hooked it up. PS4, Xbox One X, both detect 4K as a pass-through option, but again, no HDR support to be na or heard of. Uh, only supports uh, 444 chroma sampling as well, not 420, which is a little weird. May cause some issues for certain receivers or displays, but for the most part, should not be a concern. Overall, compatibility-wise with your game consoles and things like that, it works fine. I was able to play, record lots of different games from my PS4 and Xbox One X, my PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. No issues there. The limitations of this device really kind of reared their head when I started looking into scaling capabilities. Because in all of my capture card tests, I test retro console stuff using the open source scan converter, the RetroTink 2X, things like that, as well as formats like 1080i. So running through the OS open source scan converter, the OSSC, 2X and 3X modes work fine. So 480p in the 3X mode seemed to work fine. 4X did not want to show up at all. So that's a thing. And then 5X mostly seems to work, but there's some sort of sync issue. So for me, at least, the frame kept like jumping up and down where the top would bleed into the bottom, bottom would bleed into the top. That was a little annoying. So it has some compatibility with the open source scan converter, but probably not what you want. Then I wanted to hook up the RetroTINK 2X and try to test some of the lower resolution formats that most capture cards don't support, such as 240p from a Super Nintendo. I finally got a one-chip model, so the Super Nintendo footage, generally speaking, should be higher quality moving forward. My old non-one-chip SNES actually died, unfortunately, so rip. Uh, 240p kind of works here. It detects a 300-ish something by 240 signal and lets me capture from it. However, as you can see, when you scale it back up, it is trash. You see, I don't know the exact hardware on board here. In fact, the main HDMI receiver chip is a lattice uh, chip, which I've never heard of. I will have the product number in the description below and try to have a, uh, a macro photo of this in the video as well. Chips I've never heard of or usually seen on these capture cards, and I don't know what scaling hardware is at work here, but the scaling quality and performance here is abysmal outside of the 4K to 1080p scale. So if you set it to anything other than 1080p, you get wonky performance and then using non-standard resolutions being scaled can often end up very weird. So 240p has all sorts of scaling artifacts, despite the fact that it seems to be native. And then 480i doesn't seem to work at all. 1080i technically works, but again, it looks like ass. There's weird scaling artifacts here. And the whole way through, it just absolutely hates Resolution switching. It messes up every program I use, Virtual Dub, Windows Camera App, OP OBS. You have to deactivate and reactivate and hope it works. It just hates switching resolutions and it doesn't play well with anything but 4K input and 1080p input. There you go. For 50 to 60 bucks, if that's all your budget you have for a capture card and you don't find a nice Elgato USB 3 or PCIe or a neighbor media one used for that price. You could do worse. Like this, this is not a terrible solution. Especially again, if you're on Linux and you're trying to get something that's compatible with Linux, because not a lot of stuff is. So 